Hello, today I thought we would do a very simple first landscape for beginners in watercolour. Um, there are two methods of painting in watercolour. One is known as wet in wet and the other is known as wet on dry. So as it would suggest, wet on dry, you build it up in layers, allow each layer to dry and then paint wet paint on top of the dry paint. Wet in wet is where you merge the colours together um, while the paint's still wet. For beginners, um, and for this little exercise, I think we're going to start with doing wet on dry to make it easy. So give yourself plenty of time and let things dry in between. You can use a hairdryer to dry in between if you like, if you want to speed things up. But just be sure that your paper has cooled down after you've used the hairdryer, because otherwise your paint will dry too quickly if the paper's still, still warm from the hairdryer. So just let your paper cool a little when you use the hairdryer. And also be careful not to move the paint with the hairdryer. Um, just do it from a distance quite gently. Okay, so first of all, um, I've done on this piece of watercolour paper, which is nicely um, fastened down with masking tape, I've put a margin on and I've done the lines quite strong so that you can see them. You might want to do your lines more faintly than this so that they're not showing through too much once you finish your painting. I did use a ruler for this horizon line, so I set off and put a nice horizon line there with the ruler for this lake and I've done some imaginary mountains in the background there, a few little islands or rocks in the actual lake itself, an imaginary little wall coming down the foreground and a tree. And I've kept everything very, very simple, simple lines, um, because it's just an exercise in practicing the actual application of the paint rather than ending up with a masterpiece or anything. So, you know, just keep it nice and simple. Don't make your drawing too complicated. Make hard work for yourself. So to begin with, I'm going to put one wash over the whole thing and I'm going to do that in a very pale blue. So I'll just mix up some blue on my palette. So to tell you, I've got two pots of clean water, uh, not just one. So one is for the, the water that you're going to be using to mix your colours with and the other one is for cleaning your brush. So I'll pop some water on the palette. Plenty, because it's a nice big piece of paper, so it's going to need plenty of paint to cover it. And this is going to be a very, very pale colour. Not much pigment in here at all. And I'm just picking some cobalt. Cobalt blue. And the good thing about having a white palette, like this ceramic one I've got here, you could use a plate or um, a plastic tub or something like that, but if it's it's white it's good because you get a better idea of what the colours are going to look like on your paper. If you use something patterned to mix your paints on it can be a little confusing, you don't really see the what the colours are going to be like. So I would recommend something white and you don't have to go out and buy anything specially, you can use a, a plastic plate or um, you know a food container, all sorts of things can be used as a palette. Now so you can see that's very watery and very light with a lot of water in it and not much pigment. I'm going to apply that with a nice big flat brush. So get your brush full of paint and go all the way across from one side to the other. You'll see there that I had a, a splash of water at the top but it doesn't matter. And again from one side to the other, touching each, touching the line so that you've got no paper in between. just about enough paint because I'm nearly running out just to finish that little bottom bit there. Okay so we're now going to leave that to completely dry and it will dry lighter and it'll be very pale um, but that's going to give us a sense of distance when we build the colours up to the foreground so don't worry about it looking completely pale once it's dried just leave it now to dry thoroughly. 
Okay, so this is a stronger colour still, and I'm not going to put it all over, I'm just going to put it in various places. Like I said before, perhaps the light was more at this side, so I'll put more shadow up this side of the trunk. And on individual branches as well. And leave some lighter and some darker. I'm just going to make it a little bit more 3D. And put a few shapes in. Right here, there might be a shadow going around where those branches are joining. And then, because it's still wet down here at the bottom, I'm just going to put an imaginary shadow in. And actually I will do that with the wall as well, so just get a little bit more of the blue back into this mix. Tiny touch of blue. And just put a bit of shadow there. As if, like I say, the light's coming from this side and maybe this, this is casting a bit of shadow on this grass. Just bring it to life a bit more. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the green. So that was the cobalt and the yellow ochre. Like I say, try different yellows and, green, uh, yellows and blues so that you can uh, make different greens. If you want it much more sunny and summery, you might want to use a cadmium yellow or even a gamboge. So just made a nice mix of the green, the same as we used for the um, grass down here. And if you'll just excuse me one moment. Okay, so that's now completely dry, so we can start and do the next layer. Um, you remember before I dripped some water on it, and you can see there it's made a bit of a splodge, but I'm not going to worry about that because that could be a little cloud or something, so don't worry about anything like that uh, too much because it's all going to, it, it shows up now quite uh, obviously, but once you get more detail in your foreground, your eye isn't going to be taken to that just the same as it is at the moment. Okay, so I've, I didn't clean this out, I've still got that little bit of blue in there. Um, so I'm going to get some more clean water, get the same blue, which was cobalt. You can use a different blue, it doesn't matter. Get a different feel with different blues, it might give you a different feel of a different time of day, feel of a different uh, country. Just experiment with your different blues that you've got. So this is much thicker mixture, there's more paint pigment in here and less water than we had in the first wash. And to that I'm going to add some red and I'm going to add some permanent rose. Again you can choose whichever red you fancy. Okay and don't forget that this is going to dry much lighter. So now I'm going to decide that this mountain here is the furthest away. I'm going to get a smaller brush. And I'm just going to fill in this shape. Going over into the second lot of mountains, covering the whole thing, and avoiding going over 
the mountains in the lake there. So I, you might not be able to see it, but I can still see that pencil line through of where the first row of mountains come to. It's drying quite quickly because I've got my heater on in here. So you just need to be careful it doesn't dry too quickly and you end up with lots of hard lines. I won't, actually, I won't go, um, I was going to go around the tree there, but I'll just go straight over it because we're going to be going in with a much darker colour on the tree. And I'm just going to make that edge come out a little bit and make it a bit wonky just to give us the impression of that land petering off there. I'll just smooth some of these lines off. Okay, so we'll now leave that one to dry. And we'll go on to this one. Now to make this one, this one's actually behind, so it needs to be paler. We were just, I, that one's the furthest away. This one's nearest to us, and this one's in the middle of those two. So it needs to be a stronger colour than that first colour. So we're just going to add more of the blue to the same mix but we're not adding any more water so I'm just over here adding more of the cobalt so more blue and less red and again we'll just go straight over those trees just be careful where the two mountains touch that you're not that you know if one of them's if the other one's still wet it might run into it but it isn't actually because it's like I say it's drying quite quickly in here with it being quite warm with my heater on it's such a, a nasty cold day outside that I've got the heater on in here It's also drying out some of my paintings. Okay, and again we'll just make that a little bit less uniform on the bottom there. So now because this has dried quite nicely, we'll do this foreground one and again we'll put even more blue in this time. Just cover the whole thing with that stronger blue. Okay, and now we're going to go on to these foreground ones. Same mix with a little bit more pigment in it and less water. And because these are supposed to be sitting in the water, we want them to have quite a nice horizontal line across the bottom of them. So if you get your brush, wash it out, put some clean water on it, and then slightly take some of that water out so that your brush is just not just damp and not too wet. And then just drag it along the bottom and pull out some of that colour. 
in a nice horizontal line. But can you see how that, that's making it look quite watery? As if those islands are sitting in the water there. And you could actually do that to soften off some of the lines at the top here as well. You put some lines further along to indicate some shadows maybe or waves. I will just take that little bit off but it doesn't matter because that's that's over the margin okay now at the moment I don't think these are showing up too much against that last one so I'm just going to put a little bit more pigment in those make them a touch stronger And if you don't cover the whole thing, if you just put it, put some extra pigment in in places, just dot it in. It might, it just gives you the impression of some shadows in the rocks. Okay, and now we're going to leave that to completely dry. Okay, so that's completely dry now. Um, you can see that by using um, stronger colour as we come forward how that makes this one appear further away than these. Um, if you wanted to give yourself a lot more distance, then you could make these paler still. So just add more water and less paint pigment if you want to give them uh, a feeling of being a long, long way away. Okay, um, so now we're going to come into the foreground and I'm going to use the same colours. So I've still got this mix in here of the red and the blue and I'm going to add to that some yellow. Now when you add the three primaries together, the blue, yellow and red, um, I'm going to use yellow ochre. It, you can make some nice greys and browns, so some nice neutral colours. A bit more yellow. Can you see how we're turning that into a nice grey? That I'm going to use for drawing this wall so it could be limestone or something. Okay. Now like I said before, if you just want to have um, a play with different colours, use different primaries to the ones I've used, and then just test your colours out on the side. That's a good thing about having a margin. It gives you somewhere to play with your colours and check, check which ones you want to use. So just have, have a go at mixing different primaries together to get different greys and browns and see which ones you like the best. So just covering the whole thing and then gonna leave that to dry. Just made those, can you see where it made it look as if it might be stones on the top of the wall there and then the walls disappearing away over the top of this hill that's going down there, I'm just tapering off. So we're going to leave that to dry and then we're going to put some grass in the foreground. So I'm going to use the same two colours um, that we've already used, the yellow ochre and the cobalt to make a nice green. And because we're nearer the foreground we're using less water again and more pigment. And how green or how yellow you want it, you know, whether you want to add it, make it more bluey, a bluey green or a yellow green, it might depend on the time of year, how sunny it is. Again, just wait for this one to dry a little before you put your next one on. Where it touches there, it could bleed into each other if it was very wet. I think I will put a little bit more yellow in that and just go over it again, make it brighter. A 
Blue is a colour that recedes, that looks further away. Yellow is a warmer colour that looks nearer to you. So if you want your foreground to pop forward and send your background further away, add more yellow. So just going over the same area again with a more concentrated wash, less water in that than the last wash and more of the yellow. And don't worry about going over your margin lines because if you were putting a border on that would be covered up anyway. Or you could cut it out if you like when you're finished. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry. Now that this wool has dried a little bit, we'll use a, a bit of a smaller brush. And I'm going to add, make a stronger mix of the same colour of that brownie grey. I'm going to just put some, pretend there's some shadows under some of the um, stones there. So don't think too hard about this, just make, you know, do some little random shapes. It's a, maybe a stone wall, higgledy piggledy. Okay, and that just gonna, that just gives us that impression that there's um, some, a little bit of a stone wall there. And can you see how, because these colours are stronger and there's more yellow in here, they look nearer to us than these mountains. So the last thing to do is the tree. And because I don't want to complicate things, I want to keep things very simple. I'm again not using any more colours, so this whole painting is going to be done just with the three primary colours. But I'm going to add, because you see how this is quite a grey colour, to make it more brown for the tree, I want to add more yellow and red and not any more blue. And that'll make a nice warm brown. Again, it's an imaginary tree. This is still a little bit wet, this green, but we will make it come down onto that. I don't want it looking like it's just not actually rooted into the ground. Now when you're drawing some, a living object, like a tree or a flower, go in the direction that it's growing. Don't start at this end and paint that way, always go in the way it's growing. So you can see as you go up your branches, start and lift your brush, take the pressure off so that it peters out. And this is a very simplified tree, we're not putting like heaps of branches in, just one or two little ones. And lift your brush off as you get nearer to the edge. And this is where you want to play with your brushes and, and use different brushes because some give you nicer lines than others. And don't forget some branches of your tree. I'm just going to make that trunk a bit wider because it seems to be wider further up. Some branches of the tree will not, they're not all uh, going out of the side like um, I've drawn it at the moment. Some are going to be coming from the front of the tree and some are going to be appearing from the bit from behind the tree. And the way you can do that is to, well, the angle, angle the branches. 
but also to put some shade in. So now we're going to go darker, more pigment of the same colours. Okay, so for the finishing touches, we're just going to pop some leaves on these trees, on this tree rather. Um, so I've got some natural sponges here. You can buy these from the art shop, uh, but, but don't worry if you haven't got any. You could use some old bath sponges or something, just chop into them a little bit to make them a bit more textured. Um, or you could use your brushes. Um, but if you have one of these and you want to have a go, um, the, you can buy some are more coarse than others. I quite like this little one actually. I'm very good at losing these, to be honest with you. Uh, when I dry things with my hair dryer, they blow off the table and then disappear. Um, but yeah, I like I like this the shape of this little one for trees. So, I'm, and I've just got the same green that I had for the grass. And just pop some of that on onto the sponge, and then just put some put some leaves on. And obviously don't put them where, the, where you haven't got branches, it's going to look a bit silly otherwise. Okay, so that was just the green, um, the same two colours, the cobalt and the uh, yellow ochre. And now I'm just got, I'm going to put some yellow ochre on its own, just to lighten it a bit in places. Okay, and if there's a little bit left on your sponge and you want to put a bit of texture into your grass, you could just pop some in your grass as well. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you um, have a chance to give it a go yourself. Just remember a few things. To keep your blues to the backgrounds, your yellows to the foregrounds. Um, I've done it quite strong so that it'll show up to you, but you might want to give a, a go to adding a little bit more water in some of these backgrounds, make it a little bo bit more misty and hazy, give you a little bit more distance. Try different blues, yellows and reds, see what different effects you get. By using different yellows and blues, you'll get a feel of a different time of year or a different time of day. Perhaps a cadmium um, might make it look a bit more summery. If you want to go autumnal, you could add more reds to it uh, rather than the yellow. So just have a play with it, um, see what you think and let me know how you get on. And if you've enjoyed it, then uh, please do subscribe. And also don't forget you can always let me know if there's anything particular that you would like me to demonstrate for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.